This is a Tibet House member video and is a part of the Force for Good class series, now available at tibethouse.us. Sorry to condemn it, but it is the case. That is the bottom line in our culture. I'm, I'm very much sorry. That is why, and do you wonder why we happen to be destroying our planet? destroying all the other animals on it, and we have machinery that could destroy in a war in a short period of time, which we hand over to some psychological defectives through elections, or become, they become dictators through politics, another kind of politics. Is that intelligent? Do you think we're an intelligent culture? Everyone is all freaked out by Donald Trump, but as a brilliant article by Matt Taibbi said, Donald Trump is only saying what the Republicans have been saying since Nixon, at least, but at the dog whistle level, you know, about race and about this and that, you know. He's only saying it out loud, <laughs> and everyone's all freaked out. But he's saying this, they're all like that. Okay, sorry, I know, this is Lemrim. <laughs> but this is the basis. You're not gonna get anywhere with all these things if you, if you think you're nothing. Because if you're nothing, and you have these impulses, and you have impulse of greed and obsession, you have certain angers and certain things you will not tolerate and you're like, we're righteous about, and then when you get depressed, you're ready to do yourself in at the, sh at, at the you know, put squeeze of a trigger or a you know, bottle full of sleeping pills, then you're not going to really make the kind of inner effort required to understand any of this, in fact. Because you don't, you, you feel you don't have, it's like that guy said to me, you can't get enlightened, you're not, you're just an American. And, you, and what gets enlightened is your mind, and you Americans don't think you have one. That's what he said to me. And I was saying, no, I'm this and that. But he was right, absolutely right. Even though I was already being a Buddhist monk and going through the motions and really intense about it. But somewhere I was still convinced that the realistic thing was, it's just all biological robot. And then I'm trying basically to do something, you know, mind over matter that I, that I don't think I have the mind energy to do. Do you follow me? They're trying to just stay asleep, get asleep, just go unconscious, period, without having to die. But they want to just, they think Satori is going to be, whew, everything disappears and they disappear. What a relief. Nothing to worry about because it's all gone. They can put as many parking tickets on the window of my car outside the Zen Center as they like, because I'm never coming back. That's, That's what really materialism boils down to. There is this, not this subtle mind energy that's more powerful, actually, than atom energy, than coarse flesh and blood and so on. Okay? So liberty and opportunity are hard to get. This human life that you have, that puts us here in this classroom today, and many other great classrooms, greater than this classrooms that you've been in, it's hard to find this. Not many people do get into thinking along these lines. So that, that's a very powerful theme to reflect. How valuable do I really think I am? How do I spend my time? Do I consider my time to be infinitely precious? As evolutionary, like what I put my attention on, is that something really important because of the type of attention that I have? Or do I some, just sort of veg out, you know, like watch the commercials or whatever, you know? What do I do? Okay. And second theme, there's no time in life. So once you really get to feel you're valuable by meditating this, the next thing you really have to think about is that you're going to die. And then at first you say, well, I know I'm going to die, everybody knows that. But then you, if you look again, you examine yourself. All of these meditations involve critical thinking. And you examine yourself, you're like, oh yeah, I'll be here next week. I'm going to come back tomorrow, I'm going to do that. Next year after I retire, I'm going to do the other thing. We act like we're immortal, actually. And we have, a, again, in our culture, you know, you know, Joe Schmo is sitting there and the, the doctor has, like, terminal. They brought in the body bag in the closet. The nurses are ready at any moment. They're not bothering with whatever it is. The guy's gone, but they come in and say, okay, I'll, be, I'll come back next week. I'll bring you your favorite apple pie. They're taught to do that. 
And although it's beginning to change now with the hospice thing and so on and the expense of staying in the hospital. But when I was small, that's what you did. It would be rude to say to the most terminal person, okay, bye, this is, I guess, the last hurrah. I won't be seeing you since you're going. You're traveling, right? You don't do that. Again, to hide it from that person so they think they'll be there because that's what we think. So we live in denial that we're going to die. If you really think about, I am going to die, then it makes your presence much more precious. And furthermore, I don't know when it will be. You know, then they, you meditate on the young one sometimes dies before the old one. The health, sick one, the healthy one sometimes dies before the one they think is sick. The one in a safe place sometimes dies by an accident than the one who's on the front line somewhere. There's no security as to when it could happen, any time. Won't happen here in Tibet House, though. <laughs> For sure. Don't worry. Not today. But it could happen. I mean, they could, you know, Putin could nuke New York. Or they could do it.